There's a big event in D.C. tomorrow called Justice for J6. As many of you know, our network has been perpetually reporting on the fact that there are still folks who attended that January 6th protest who are basically just rotting away in D.C. jail. So justice for them is absolutely required, lest we all be... Uh, of the mindset that there are two tiers of justice and I think that that's something that we have all been suspicious of all along but this makes it abundantly clear so I want to bring in the organizer of that event Matt Brainerd who is also the executive director of Look Ahead America Matt thank you so much for joining us thanks for having me I'm glad to be here my pleasure. Okay, so I just want to give you some headlines. When you look up this event tomorrow uh, from some of the more left-leaning sites, September 18th far-right rally in D.C. New D.C. rally organizer hopes to rewrite history of Capitol riot. The man behind Saturday's pro-Trump rally once praised a far-right assassin. Lots of headlines surrounding this event. Of course, none of them seem to be accurate, not the ones that I just read off at any rate. But I also want to show you this clip of Roger Stone discussing the event tomorrow. Here it is. Roger, there's a rally that's uh, being billed as Justice for J6, scheduled for Saturday, September 18th in D.C., um, and some are calling it also for uh, you know, justice for, for, for uh, uh, Babbitt. Uh, who, who was killed by the, by the police. Uh, the authorities are fearing violence. Uh, they are, the Capitol Police have asked that the fencing be put back up around the Capitol building. Um, do, you, um, do you know, I'm not saying, I'll ask this question. Do, are you going? Do you know anything about it? And what do you think might happen there? This is called agate prop. I don't need, know a single person in the MAGA movement who is going. It's a setup. Here's my, here's my suggestion. The people who will be there, We'll all be working for the government. Nice try. Uh, I don't know a single person who's going. I'm not going. The danger is obvious. There's so many unanswered questions about January 6th. Now they're trying to recreate it. It's a it's a sympathy ploy. Uh, let's face it. January 6th, January 6th gave the government the greatest single opportunity they've ever had to uh, abridge our constitutional rights, particularly our first amendment rights. No, patriots, stay away from Washington. This is what is called a set up. All right, Matt, I'm going to throw Roger Stone a bone because a lot of us since learning that the FBI was in fact involved in the January 6th protests, uh, since learning that we are all a little dubious of, of some of these events and the government's involvement of that. But I'm pretty sure you're not an apparatchik for propaganda, right? No, and you know, it is an apparatchik for propaganda. The only network, apparently, that will have Roger Stone on, Russia Today. And that's where he's making these claims. I mean, I guess that's the only place that has been can get any airtime. But if he was so smart, why didn't he warn you not to go to the January 6th rally? So yeah, he clearly I agree. Does, and uh, I'm as MAGA as it gets. But what I want to make clear is that this rally isn't really about MAGA. It's not really about the people who committed violence on January 6th either. We condemn those people and we think they belong in prison if they're convicted. This is about the nonviolent offenders who are swept up and persecuted far beyond what anybody who had ever done anything like that before, whether they were with AOC storming the Speaker's office or storming the Senate office buildings and the Kavanaugh hearings. This is way out of proportion. These people are being treated this way not because of what they did, but because of their beliefs. And there needs to be a public investigation of what happened to Ashley Babbitt. It's unprecedented or unheard of for anybody to think it's acceptable for a police department to kill an unarmed citizen and to clear itself. Police departments this day and age do not get to clear themselves when they shoot an unarmed citizen. So we want a public investigation of that. We want the 14,000 hours of video from that day released. So these are really simple things. And this is a traditional, typical First Amendment exercise on the Capitol grounds, permitted. Capitol Police are gonna be there in force. Uh, so are the Metropolitan Police, the Park Police. We have a diplomatic security team that's gonna be there making sure everybody is safe. But look, honestly, just getting all this uh, criticism from these grifters on the right, these has-beens and nobody, kind of confirms to me that I'm doing the right thing. Because none of those guys that are throwing shade on this, they're not making any money off of it. So of course they're going to throw shade on it. Yeah. 
And, you know, while we're talking about a two-tiered system of justice, I think we also have to look at it as a two-tiered system of political activism. Because make no mistake, if these were Democrats who were in D.C. supporting Joe Biden and they were rotting away in solitary confinement in D.C. jail, being denied medical services, being denied conversations with their attorneys and families, there would be a lot of Democrats in Congress who were rallying around those folks and, and working to make a difference. But with the exception of, of maybe a few Republican congressional members, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, and a few others, there hasn't really been much much word of this on the floor of Congress. And, and I'm, I'm befuddled over that because they should be fighting for these folks. Well, it's the combination of stupidity and cowardice. We already have a Rasmussen poll out saying that the majority of the American people agree with us that these are political prisoners. So I think a lot of those uh, elected officials just haven't read, read the polls yet. But here's here's really what their strategy is. They think that if they ignore what happened on January 6th and they ignore the people who have been politically persecuted, they ignore the folks sitting in solitary confinement who are not charged or accused of anything violent for the last nine months, they think they can get back to raising money off of your audience by talking about socialism bad or demanding tax cuts or building up these, you know, celebrity boogeymen, rather than talking about the real violations of rights of their constituencies and refusing to stand up for them. So that's their game plan. But look, since we started this in January, this advocacy, again, for the nonviolent offenders, we condemn all violence that happened on January 6th. Anybody that perpetrated needs to be in prison. We don't dispute that. But for the many nonviolent offenders and the abuse of their civil rights, and abuse of their constitutional rights, we've been driving this train for a very long time. And now we're at a point where it was 49% in the Rasmussen poll, including 45% of Democrats. The public is increasingly on our side. And we say, somebody, do you think that a police department should be able to clear itself when they kill an unarmed citizen? Folks realize they're on our side. When you say to somebody that there are people not accused of violence who are being held in solitary confinement, they haven't been convicted. They've just been indicted. Not even convicted, being denied bail, solitary confinement for nine months, being denied medical care, et cetera. Are you okay with that? No, they're not. And then they realize they're on our side. So part of this is building up the PR for it. And, it, you know, it's just kind of sad. We knew we'd have to deal with the left because this rally on September 18th is far scarier to them than what happened on January 6th. On January 6th, when you have a bunch of people breaking laws, big ones by assaulting police officers and small ones by trespassing, they love that. They, that's how they want us to behave because then they can send the FBI to our houses and arrest us and lock us up indefinitely. But when you have a peaceful protest where we're breaking no law, everything is permitted, we're all behaving extremely well and being very polite and kind to any law enforcement that day, they don't know how to deal with that. And that's the method that Gandhi used in India. That's the method that the civil rights movement used in this country. And that's what we're going to use now to get justice for J6. And I'm telling people, look, don't believe these doubters. Don't believe these critics who have never, who can't organize a paper airplane conference. We've done two of these rallies in D.C. already without incident at the Department of Justice, right in their face, and at the prison. We've had seven or no, nine rallies across the country just like this. This is going to be a successful, clean event. We have it well managed. It's completely professional, and it's well within your rights. So don't be discouraged from expressing your First Amendment rights just because some, uh, some grifters on the supposed right, some ardent chair patriots, tell you not to go. Right, and I applaud your effort to, uh, I guess, cast more light on the optics of what actually happened. Because you're right, when people learn the the you know circumstances surrounding this, then they come over to our side and say, yeah, this is absolutely wrong. Now, speaking of police, the head of, of the Capitol Police uh, said in a press conference that regarding the mainstream media reports of violence, that he saw no credibility that that was going to take place. No, and well, look, we're glad that they're there. And I saw him say a statement that no violence or uh, destruction of property is going to be tolerated. We completely agree with that. Nor should we, we're completely opposed to any kind of political violence in this country. We haven't had any of our rallies. We condemn it at the January 6th rally. That's not what this is about, despite what the mainstream media wants you to think, which is that, you know, we're all those guys bashing police officers' heads. We're going down to the Capitol to fight for them. We are absolutely not. That's, that's not our target. So we're kind of caught between, you know, the left here and the pretend clown world, imaginary right. Uh, but I know we're going to have a yeah. successful event. And we're going to have a successful event in 17 states within the coming weeks where we're also planning these rallies. Awesome. One quick question. Are you concerned that Antifa is going to show up and try to agitate? We are well prepared for anybody that tries to cause problems. We have a massive police force backing us up. We have a massive private security force 
We're well organized so that when people leave our rally, they're going to be leaving a good group. And in everybody's pocket is a television production studio. And we're encouraging anybody that sees anything unusual to start rolling tape on that. And if anybody tries to cause trouble at our rally through violence or anything like that, they're going to have a really bad time. And I would encourage them to find something else to do that day. Yeah. Well, like you said, this is in your wheelhouse. You've done these events before, and we wish you the best of luck tomorrow. We look forward to covering it on our network. Just about 30 seconds left. Who all is going to be there? Who's going to be speaking? Well, everything you need to know is at lookaheadamerica.org slash rally. Myself and Kara Castronova are going to be speaking. We're going to be emceeing the event. We have family members who've been victimized by this who are going to speak. We have congressional candidate Mike Collins from Georgia's 10th District and Joe Kent from Washington's 3rd District coming to speak. So look ahead america.org slash rally to find everything you need to know. I love it. There are going to be people crisscrossing the country uh, traveling to Washington, D.C. for this event tomorrow. So we appreciate you. Matt Brainerd, Executive Director of Look Ahead America, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.